I'm with my boy, Jim Larkin. Yo. I'm with my boy, William O'Brien. Also, yo. Over here is Patrick Pierce. Now, I'm not going to say yo, Patrick Pierce, because I suppose he's what we would call the problematic fave. In that, yeah, he, he fought for our country, but also, you know, in hindsight, not a great person. Bit fascist, bit pedophilic. Hey guys, it's me. I'm Paul. I'm blind. Well, as I said, I'm blind, but I can also see out the train window and I can tell you exactly what is outside at any given moment. Yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? Hey guys, it's me, Catherine. I literally just want to read. If you'd stop talking, thanks. Hey guys, it's me, Paul, back again, eating a pan of chocolate. Uh, I'm actually here to tell random stories about my childhood as well. So if you want to listen up, that'd be welcome. Thank you. Tom Broner, pal, but there is a worm in your pan of chocolate. Really? That's mad. Yeah, it's crazy how nature do that, you know, but if he only eats pink, he's gonna be pink. Right, I'm a die. Can you pass me my asthma inhaler? Ah, yeah, that's grand, no bother. Among the questions which literally none of you have ever sent in is um, if I would rate the 1916 Rising Leaders from least favourite over to favourite. So, uh, yeah, that's... Just kind of what I'm going to do, to be honest. My seventh favourite, as you've already seen, is Podrick Pierce, the anti-fave, pragmatic, but still a fighter for Irish republicanism. Um, as I said, there's various critiques of his political leanings and his motivations for wanting an Irish state, one which was inherently Catholic. He had some very old style thoughts on social order, I guess. Sixth favourite is Joseph Mary Plunkett. Um, yeah, so I mean, he actually seems like a nice guy. I would still question kind of some of his motivations behind the Easter Rising. He was a good friend of... Ernest Blythe, um, who was another questionable figure from Irish history. Well, he was kind of in favour of a German Kaiser ruling Ireland. <laughs> Clocking in at number five is Sean McDiarmida. Now, I suppose I have a lot of respect for the background he came from. It was a Aurora Leitrim background. Um... And, yeah, I mean, he was pretty full-on with that whole republicanism thing. Yeah, he was also arrested for speaking out against, uh, against British Army recruitment, which is nice. What were his motivations? I'm not completely certain. <laughs> At number four is uh, Thomas Macdonough, a decent guy, very decent republican, which you would imagine most Republican revolutionaries would be. He very keen on the trade union movement. He as a founding member of the ASTI union, which is actually still in existence today, so yeah. <laughs> Three there is Eamon Kant. Very interesting man, I guess. Um in that actually his history goes back a lot further than maybe some of the other earlier ones did. Which is actually why uh, why maybe my critique isn't most balanced. But I would like to hear your critiques of Irish Republicanism in the comments. Um, yeah, so he was an ardent trade unionist and outspoken when it came to actually issues like the Wexford lockout, which was successful. Or, or as well, the more famous Dublin lockout. Um, yeah, so big into, a, big into Eamon Kant. He was a man with flaws. Um... Uh, you know, he had very tacit support for the Boer War, but that was pretty mainstream amongst Irish Republicanism, or Irish Republicans. At number two, yeah, you guessed it, it's Thomas Clark. 
interesting theory about Thomas Clark. And yeah, it's just kind of that he was the real leader of the rising. If you look at the proclamation, is on top of all the signatories. He was the oldest one by far, but he was clearly, arguably, the most senior and the most involved in planning for the rising. We at the time, not really recorded in history, a decent man with de- uh, decent morals, I guess. Clocking in at number one. Yeah, you guessed it. It is our James Conway. Probably come as no surprise that I see James Conway as being my favourite 1916 rebel. Executioners. Very interesting piece to say how much he regretted shooting James Conley in hindsight when he had realised exactly what the man stood for. I think I would not do this deed again for all that I hold by as I gazed down my rifle at his breast. But then, then a soldier I. Don't forget to like and subscribe.